why a reason why do people still use this thing that certain people like to dismiss and well certain people always just want to be negative so i'm not very interested in those but it is literally a full studio right from very early on even before audio became a thing within reason and before vsts it acted like a complete studio i sold off all my gear my synthesizers around the room i was happy to get rid of them and get several screens around on two at the time for a lot of years but then when i had access to the 19 was lying around it's like wow that's even better so it is a full functioning studio the workflow is really where it matters now workflow is a personal choice i was watching a video this morning about a fellow and um and how he masters and he says oh you really can't do this in in any other door and technically he may be right but all the stuff that he's saying is absolutely essential is essential to him and i'd be like no so it, workflow is a very personal choice and don't let other people tell you otherwise what works for you is what works for you but you've got to find what works for you by actually doing the work. Speed and ease, and that's really been the, the, the catchwords for the Reason 13 update, is like Reason said, we want to make everything faster and easier to do. Um, I don't look to work as fast as possible, but there is a strong element between creativity and getting it on the page and not having to fight the system that you're using and to me, reason is the thing with the least amount of fight between idea and execution. Reason is and always has been deliberately different. They never set out to be for everyone. Uh, and that really should be a marketing 101. And I'm amazed how many people don't really get that. You know, we have lots of different makes and models of cars and even a manufacturer, a Toyota or whoever. They make Corollas for people who just want a car that's going to drive from A to B. And they make the 86 or, or whatever their current sporty car is for people who like to appear interesting. Uh, so doors should be exactly like this. And while there's a fair amount of pressure within Dorville to say, oh, well, they should all be exactly the same. It's like, what's the point of that? You know, if they're all the same, why would we get one, one, one over another? Reasons always been very, very different. And they're different in how they operate. They're different in everything they do. And if you get it, you get it. If you don't, you don't. To use the car analogy, it's a Jeep thing. You get it or you don't. Reason very much encouraged the user to find their own way. And this is also very much in keeping with the hardware days. You know, you, know, you, you bought a synthesizer. I had my Casio CZ1000 and I had initially some pedals, some stomp pedals, a wonderful Ibanez uh, yellow uh, flanger. Uh, some kind of chorus pedal. I don't remember what the chorus was, to be perfectly honest. It, it wasn't my favourite thing, the flange of the pedal. I was like, whoa. And then various other things, like a Fostex X26 tape uh, four track, which couldn't stay in time to save itself. Uh, we had to work out individually how we are going to put them together. We might talk to our friends and say, my MIDI doesn't work. But we still had to find our own solutions. And what worked for one person didn't necessarily work for the other person. Some of us worked on the floor because we liked working on the floor. Some of us worked on desks and what have you because we had desks. But there was no sense of, which unfortunately does tend to happen in Dorville. Reason tends to be light on for a lot of menu diving features. They've started to get into increased right-click menu stuff. Don't always love it, but it's sort of necessary. But there is not as much menu diving to access things, and most things are doable with little to no menu diving. There are various other ways of doing things. And there's really virtually nothing that isn't actually achievable as an end result within reason. People will try and tell you, oh, but you need this feature from some other door before you can... And I have really no truck with it because either I don't want to do that thing, that thing possibly shouldn't have been done in the first place, but if you really do want to do that thing, you can work out how to do it in here and the choices that you make will be yours. They will not be the preset that was given by you know, Mr. Developer or Mr. Sub-Developer or Mr. Plugin Developer or whatever. And I value that, you know, coming from the time of, of punk and DIY, the sense of saying, 
I will, I will put in the I sound like John Lydon preset. It's just like, loser. So, again, horses for courses, but reason will allow you to do anything that you can think of. If you can't do it here, you probably just don't really want to do it because you haven't worked out how to get there. And my opinion on a lot of things, like people come to me and they go, oh, but I need to know all about compression. I need to use compression. I'm like, well, why? Oh, because you're supposed to, to be producery, man. And I'm like, well, you know what? I made, I don't know how many records, but I made probably easily 50 records with no compression whatsoever. And they're fine records as far as I'm concerned. Uh, when I had them listened to by other engineers, they were like, yeah, it's a nice mix. Alan Parsons with Eye in the Sky was actually fighting with his assistant engineer who kept wanting to compress everything. And he's like, no, no, it doesn't sound good. Turn those compressors back off because we want this to sound open and magical. So the thing is, you don't have to compress everything. So my opinion here is if you don't know how to use a thing, train yourself. Or if you don't really know how to use it or why you're using it, just don't use it. You don't have the demand for it. So reason allows you to work out what you want to do and get there yourself, meaning that your solutions will have your sticky fingerprint on them rather than just being formulaic. And to some people, that's like the worst idea ever. To people like me, that's the only way to do this thing because otherwise we might as well just be in a sausage factory. That's the main reason why Reaper works for some people and reason works for other people. Reason can be, and I brought up Reaper deliberately from this, Reaper can be seen as being, oh, but you know, you can't personalize it. Well, there is a little bit of personalization, but the personalization, as I've said, is in the way that you work. Reaper, they go on about how you can change everything. And, and I sort of go, well, I can't change it to a way that actually works for me. So it doesn't matter how much I can change the colors. It still doesn't work for me. That's a personal choice. I can use it if I need to, but I don't feel comfortable there. I don't feel creative because everything is a hassle. Whereas in reason, everything flows really easily. That to some extent comes from having used it for, for 15 plus years, but it was how it felt when I first got it as well. And it hasn't changed. Personalization things are available but mostly it's in the way in which you choose to operate that you find your personalization. I use the light theme because I've always preferred light themes. To me, this is a professional thing. This is work. This isn't video games. I'm not a gamer. When I do want to kill monsters, I go into game mode. And yes, most games are dark by default. But when I'm working, it's, it's a nice white sheet of paper sir, and a biro. Um, there is a light theme and a dark theme. The dark theme, I admit, does look sexier. I don't enjoy working in it. Choose the one that you want. I'm not going to show you simply because I don't want to have to restart the program in the middle of this recording. So there are some limits as to what you can do. There is a template. So when you turn on Reason, you launch Reason, you can have a default project that comes up. It can either be absolutely empty which is in many ways great. In, in certain ways, I would say my ideal template has absolutely nothing in it to stop me from having that situation where you open up and your piano's already there, your drums are already there, and your everything is already there. I can kind of understand that, but for me it doesn't work because I'm going to use the same drums, I'm going to use the same piano, I'm going to use the same bass, and it's like boring. Um, I'm an electronic musician, so... I want to see where the muse leads me through just opening something up and playing around with it and go, oh, and then the muse strikes and I go, thank you, song gods, and I'm off. But I do use a default template, as you see, which actually contains just the basic structure and no more. Primarily, it just contains what will ultimately become my mastering rig. You can also have it so that it just automatically loads your last song. Whatever you were project you were last working in, it just automatically opens up again. Now, that's actually a pretty nice option, so you don't have to go and go, oh, well, what was I working or whatever? It's just there. So you open up and, bing, you're right back where you were before. Uh, that's the majority of 
the options that we've got. You can choose where you have your uh, VST and what have you. Although increasingly, I will say you might as well just use the VST2 folder next to the VST3 folder. And increasingly, don't use VST2 where you can use VST3 because they're just better. But that's just common standard stuff and you can set up your controllers. That's it's all really standard stuff. There's nothing unique about that. Reason does have an application zoom. This is an interesting one. You can move from 100%. Now, Reason is prone to being a little tiny. Always has been, but there's a lot that they are trying to fit on the screen at once. But particularly with the white theme, it's actually eminently readable still, even for someone like me who is really struggling to see things clearly anymore. There are also options to zoom right in. Uh, I think we can go to 160% here without getting too heinous. Yeah, so you can see how beautiful devices actually look. Uh, so let's go over here. See how lovely this actually looks. When they implemented this and they got this working well, it really, there, there is a, an almost tactile feel for how big it blows up. It's probably a little too big to use. Um, I will sometimes run at 140%. Understand, however, of course, that doesn't resize your VST because the VST rendering has got nothing to do with reason. But we'll drop back to 110 just so it's a little easier to, uh, to for everyone to see what's going on here. Obviously, you can have some control over how you set your window balance and what have you. Um, it is much easier if you're using the F5, F6 and F7, so that way you get each one of these in full screen, but you can also balance these together. If you press control, um, then it will detach completely, which is being able to use in multiple windows. These will go off to the multiple screens, uh, so you won't see them if I detach them. You can and I do for secondary windows, so like my rack where it's out on another screen, you can actually hide your transport. And if you are working on a small single screen, and particularly if you've got a good controller keyboard, a modern one, which will have your play, pause, record, what have you on the front panel, like here, the no hands, you can actually get rid of your transport completely. I leave it on my main screen where my sequencer is, but turn it off on the um, on the rack for you because I don't want it over there. Some of those things, I admit, they are a little moved from place to place, so a little inconsistent, but this is the nature of all doors that they grow through an accretion method rather than a, a bigger strategy, but reason tends more still to work under a bigger strategy or feels like that anyway, or at least one that makes sense to me. The other big arrangement thing is blocks. You see I've got a piece of music here and this is written as MIDI in the window. And we'll go over MIDI more later. But there is another mode which you can turn on, enable blocks. And you see I've now got more influence stuff that's appeared over here. Let's move this across. over there so we've got some information here and if I focus and play that that is information that's actually in a block so if I double click you can see here is my block here is my information that I wrote in this block or pattern because this is pattern modes so if I then put that into back into song mode, so you can have quite a few blocks, like up to 32 blocks of material, and then chain them together. But something that's actually really interesting about uh, Reason's blocks is that if I decide, okay, now I want my hook to be a little bit different here, I can merely write over it. So if we listen here, I 
I've got the ability to vary the material by just overwriting the bit that I want to overwrite. That's very elegant. I don't use blocks, uh, but they are a very interesting take on allowing people to do the pattern mode thing. I'm very much a linear mode guy, as in I start at the beginning and I work to the end, but the, um, the pattern mode thing blocks are very, very clever. A lot of people do use the blocks because of their different colors to use them as markers. I do do that sometimes for display, uh, but like for tutorials and stuff like that, but I um, don't use them personally because I just know where I am in a composition, so I've never really felt the need for markers. So there are your personalization options. That's a basic overview and setup.